she loved the Lord. My mother would, my grandmother was um, very, very hurt. You know, in Malta, as in many parts of the world, we have these, this inheritance and family feuds and family divisions. And our family, when you have a family living together and they are divided about these things, it's like war. It's like war. It's really bad. Um, but my mother, my grandmother used to cry. She used to cry a lot. I used to see her cry. And then she would call me and she'd say, let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray for them. And, and she would pray for her enemies. She would pray. And I mean, come on. In my house, in my father and mother's house, we didn't do that. I'm, I'm, I'm giving you the, the comparison. They were blessed. They had, but they didn't do that. And then she would say, you know what, I don't need anything in my life. I don't need much. I just need to know that when I die, I will be with the Lord. That's all. That's all I have and that's all I want. And somebody has to know the Lord to say these things. To say, I have the Lord and it's enough. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Because the Lord is enough. He is more than enough. But I saw my parents struggling to work. No, this is not enough because now the other people have got a car, a new car, so I want a new car. So now everybody is doing this, so we have to do it. And look, I'm not saying anything out of the blues. We all do it. We all do it. One day my mother, my mother and my grandmother, I don't know how she was her daughter, because they don't match at all. At all. My grandmother was so simple and so uh, loving. My mother used to love, but she was a very ambitious woman. I think my, my mother took after her father. Something happened genetically, you know? <laughs> but I missed my grandmother. My grandmother would say, Marcel, you know what? Today, if you are a really, really, really good girl, Jesus is going to put sweets under your pillow. How stupid. <laughs> if I say that to my youngest child, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> of course. <laughs> but in those days, we used to believe these things, you know? We used to believe them. And I used to wake up and really try my best to be a good girl really try my best, like up to the letter, huh? by the law. And then I would just put my hand on the pillow and there were sweets under the pillow. Wow, I've been a really good girl. And I say, Jesus loves me that much. And he put sweets under my pillow. He cares that much. That was something really stupid. But it started like this, my spiritual life started really, how can I put it, in the desert. It is a desert, because nobody was sharing the word. Nobody was really talking about the gospel, right? Nobody came to our house and said, Jesus died to save you. He shed his blood to save you. We are sinners. Nobody preached. But the Lord, Isaiah says, the Lord's arm is not too short to save. It's not too short. And the Lord looked upon that woman, I believe it, looked upon my grandmother and reached out his arm. Because in her ignorance, in her lack of, in her weakness, bodily, mentally, in her everything, lack of education, she had everything, she had diabetes, she had cataracts, she had blindness, right? We didn't even know that you could lay hands on someone and get healed. You were just, it's just ignorance, spiritual desert. But the Lord remembered us. Amen? Amen? He remembers. He remembers you. And he came and brought salvation in our house. And I can remember the times that the Lord spoke to me, even as a child. I used to have dreams, even from when I was a child. I tell you the reason why. Because the word, the word in that time, the Bible, was not even allowed in the Morty's houses. The priest would say, he is the only one who can interpret the Bible. So we didn't have a Bible. So how could God speak? But nobody, nobody can.
can shut the mouth of God. If you don't have a Bible, he speak to you in dreams. He speak to you in visions and he send you somebody. And God used to send me people. You know, I, I used to say, I got a lot of people helping me when I was young in this desert. And I saw the goodness of people. And I remember the Lord because I saw the goodness of people. I was in secondary school and going through this desert, okay? I was in secondary school. And my mind was always thinking, life is useless. Life is really useless. My life has no use. What use, what use does my life have? What am I going to do with my life? In the end, everybody's going to die. My mind would think like this. And we had, I had a friend of mine, she, was, uh, she came to the same school, and she lived in a town nearby. And she started to talk about the Lord. She was talking to me about the Lord. I used to think at first she was, it was too much, you know, she's too, uh, I have to run away from this place, you know. These people who talk to you about the Lord sometimes, they are too much. They argue and this and that. But this, this friend was really sweet. And she used to talk to me and say, and, and try to help me. So I used to share with her, you know, I used to sometimes joke and say, eh, but Anna, you know, we are all going to die, so why are you doing this? It's for nothing. I used to really persecute her. And this girl used to write me a card every week. This is in Malta, in the spiritual desert. Like, how does a person write a card every week to a school friend about Jesus? in 1982 when there was not even i think there there must have been a few evangelicals in malta but not much probably most of the missionaries and this girl took the time to write me a card and say you are special to jesus christ she didn't belong to a prayer meeting she didn't where did she get that from and this is what my encouragement is this morning is two things the Lord remembers us. The Lord sees us. Just when you think nobody is really recognizing what you're doing, nobody is rewarding you, because we need it. We need. We need praise. We need affection. We need recognition. We need respect. As it's a human need. But sometimes there is none. Sometimes it's just. It looks like the world is empty of love, and everywhere you look, you jump. It's is not there, you know? And you feel helpless, you feel lonely, you feel a time of 